Has this ever happened to you? I'd assume this happens to most of you guys daily. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys six productive resin-free activities I do in Genshin when I have no resin. If you follow this guide, after a week you should have 151,700 mora, 70 weapons for fodder, 521 fodder artifacts, and 161 crystal chunks. And a key assumption I'll be making here is that you already finished all the available content in the game and just want to further your account progress. Starting with the blacksmiths, there are three in total in the game right now, two in Mondstadt, once you enter the castle gates on the left, and one in Liyue Harbor on the right of the Adventurers Guild. There are no requisites for this, and it'll cost you 4,500 mora daily, which totals to 31,500 mora weekly. The rewards will be 5 2-star weapons and 5 1-star weapons each day, and that comes 35 of each weekly, meaning you'll have 70 weapons each week to upgrade your higher rarity ones without having to use enhancement ores. The time taken for this activity is less than a minute, and for a side note, you cannot buy from both Wagner and Master Zhang. Once you buy from one of them, the stock for the 5 2-star weapons will be sold out in their counterpart's shop as well. It is ideal to buy from Wagner since he is within close proximity to Schultz. While at the blacksmiths, you can also start your next resin-free activity, which is mining at the rich ore reserves, after the respective blacksmiths mark them on your map. The refresh rate for this is daily, and the locations vary, but there are usually 3 mining spots in Mondstadt and 5 in Liyue. And the only requisite here is that you have to have a reputation level of at least 2 in both cities, and there is no cost in doing this either. For teams, the best miners in order are Zhongli, Razor, and then Klee. As Zhongli and Razor have large AoEs that could break any ore, and Klee's charge attack can break them in two hits. Other than that, you'd want double animal for its extra movement speed and stamina cost reduction. If you don't have Zhongli, Razor, or Klee, any Claymore user will do, alongside Ningguang if you have her too. The rewards are around 23 crystal chunks daily, which becomes 161 weekly, and if converted, this becomes 40 Mystic Enhancement Ores to level your weapons weekly. The time taken for the run you're seeing on screen now was about 6 minutes, but this varies due to the different locations of these mining spots, especially the ones in Storm Terror's lair. Other than that, most of the rich ore reserves are located near waypoints. The next activities would be buying artifacts from some of the merchants. This refreshes weekly, and there's one in Mondstadt in front of the tavern, and one in Liyue, next to the Mingxing jewelry on the map. There are no requisites, and the price is 10,000 more a week, and it will give you 10 2-star artifacts that you can use as fodder for your better artifacts. Just like the blacksmiths, this process takes less than a minute. One thing to note, however, is that Lin Lang will only appear to shop between 22.30 and 5.59. And this is 10.30pm to 5.59am for those of you who use a 12 hour format. Next is arguably the most fruitful yet tedious activity, which is the artifact route. This refreshes daily while some certain locations are on a 12 hour timer. There are no requisites aside from having all waypoints active on the map. For teams, you're going to want double animal for its speed and stamina, along with one character who can activate a pressure plate. This includes Zhongli, Mingguang, Albedo, Ganyu, Amber, Fischl, and the Travelers in Geo form. For your 4th slot, you're going to either want Kaya or Razor for the Sprinting Stamina Reduction passive. The rewards for doing this include around 67 1 star and 6 2 star artifacts daily. And in a week, this becomes 469 1 star and 42 2 star artifacts. If you're curious how much EXP this is, it totals to around 232,000. And for reference, it takes about 269,800 EXP to get a 5 star artifact from level 1 to 20. This run will also give you around 7,600 mora each time you do it. The artifact route takes about 17 minutes each time for me. And something to note is that the number of artifacts vary per run, since the locations might have elemental particles instead of artifacts sometimes. What's up guys, this is uh, Off Script Strife here, and um, I just want to share with you guys my artif or I guess my map for the artifact route. So uh, go ahead and screenshot, or pause and screenshot here and mark on your own maps. But uh, I want to show you the route I go. So what I do usually is I start from the right side and I work my way across left to finish off in Liyue. So first, go to this teleport spawn point, go around here to this one. Then I go to here. Next one um, is with the pressure plate in the video before, go Zhongli, and then you go up here and across the mountain here to get to there. Next, I usually go to back to this waypoint and get this one right here on the bridge. Next, I go to the Chinsei one uh, waypoint, go here, make your way across here. And next, there is a waypoint around here, it's cut off from my map because I cropped it badly, but uh, then you make your way across here. 
Then next, I like to get salt ray out of the way. Go here. You can either go across or just swim across. And uh, next, go to the statue 7 here, and it'll be right across. And run here. Then you can teleport here. Go there. Sorry, it's getting really repetitive, but next one, teleport to this statue 7. Glide across. This one's a little out of order, but teleport to this spawn point, and then go down here. I know it's just to get out of the way, so I don't forget. Then next, this was the more complicated one. Go to this waypoint. Hit the treasure hoarder camp here, and make your way across to the boat here. Next, go to this waypoint. Get these two. Teleport back here, then run to here. Then here, and then get these two. You could run across to here, but what I usually do is I teleport this waypoint. Do not go to the domain, it will be harder to get there. Run across, get the treasure hoarders one. Teleport back, run to here, get these, get these. Then teleport to here, because it's close. Get these three. For this one, for these three, get to this waypoint, and then run across to get these three. Finally, almost there, teleport to this waypoint, run across, get at the house here, then run across to here. Finally, go to this waypoint. Glide down to here, then continue gliding, and then drop down to here. And there you go, you finished all of them. That's all 30 some ish locations. The next two activities are more commonly done. But in case you already finished up to level 8 reputation for both cities and don't think you need to do them anymore, you're missing out on a ton of Mora if you decide to skip bounties and requests. Starting with requests, they refresh weekly. As for locations, Mondstadt's one is directly left of the castle's central waypoint, and the Liyue one is directly behind the Adventurer's Guild. There is no requisite required to do them, and you can use any team you like. The reward is 60,000 more weekly, and it takes about 2 minutes to complete all 3. Something I'd recommend is to try to pick the ones that don't need cooked food to save on time and resources. You can pick and choose from both Mondstadt and Liyue locations. And before one of you comments, I am aware that bounties and requests are part of the weekly battle pass requirements. But if you were to finish it early, like I always end up doing, it is easy to forget to do them if there is a lack of a reminder. And finally, the last one is bounties, and they yield 90,000 more if you pick the hardest difficulties. And the time taken varies around the 10 minute mark. For teams, try to pick elements and weapons that deal more damage to the bounty, obviously, and avoid using elements that it is invulnerable to. A side note is that there is a set number of areas where there are bounties, and the bosses will always spawn in the same location per area. However, the clues aren't always in the same place. That aside, Obviously for rune guards and rune hunters, bring an archer to down them. For the level trolls, if you have Zhongli, you can save a decent amount of time breaking a shield. Alright, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you got something from this. Uh, sorry I didn't show face and I'm not feeling so great this week. And uh, as for a little update, I've been working on a Discord server recently, so stay tuned for that at 10k subs. And when time comes for that, I'll be making a community post with the invite link in it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll uh, see you next week. Bye.